Do you want a fun biology internship? Do you have a dream of traveling around the world, helping animals, seeing the world? Do you want to graduate and actually know that you have a job waiting for you instead of just the unknown of the biology job world? Then stay tuned because I'm going to give you some easy to follow tips on what type of biology internships you can find, how to build up your resume even if you have no experience, how to find those job internships, the elusive paid internship, how to actually get your resume to the top of the stack for recruiters, and how to transition your summer internship into an actual full-time job when you graduate. So there's a ton of misinformation on this topic that I find, or a lot of really generic job advice that doesn't actually pertain to people who are doing a biology or a science degree. If you're new here to my channel, I am a wildlife biologist and I got my dream job through an internship when I was in university and I've actually helped many people get internships in this field. If you want to learn more about what it's like to be a wildlife biologist from the perspective of someone who works as a scientist, subscribe to my channel, click the little bell to get notifications when I post new videos. It's incredibly important to know how to land your dream internship because internships are the key to getting a job when you graduate let's start by talking about what kind of internships are actually out there. There's five different types of internships and then there's also some that fall in a gray area between all of these. So the first type is a field-based internship. That's pretty self-explanatory. You're working in the field to gather data. You're actually out maybe in the lab, in the field, getting that hands-on technical experience in the sciences. Field internships include places like working as an intern at a wildlife sanctuary or helping a graduate student collect their research. There's also an office-based internship. An office-based internship is an internship where you're gonna be primarily based out of an office setting and you're gonna be working at writing reports for an environmental consulting company, helping a grad student process and write up their research project, or working with a senior biologist in the office to see the office-based research side. The third type of internship is a paid internship. These internships generally range from around minimum wage to 12 to 20 dollars an hour if you're able to land a higher paid internship. Generally the higher paid internships can be associated with governments, consulting companies, biotech firms, and the lower paid internships are associated with nonprofit organizations. And the other type of internship is an unpaid internship. So these ones are really common in the field of biology and wildlife biology. You're going to find more than half of internships are actually unpaid. And there's even another type of internship, the pay to intern internship. I know this is insane to me. Me, but companies actually make you pay to intern at their company. And I would highly suggest staying away from these types of internships unless you've exhausted all of your other options. One of the things that employers probably won't ever tell you, but they're secretly thinking about your paid internships, as in you pay to intern there, is that those internships are a lot less respected by employers. The reason for that being is a lot of times these companies are a little bit less reputable and a company wants someone who actually is able to produce meaningful work rather than someone who just paid to be there. So next I'm gonna talk about exactly how to build up your resume, even if you have no experience, so that you're ready to apply to these internships. These are including tips that you can start even in high school. And I highly suggest starting early because while you can get internship without any experience at all, you're always better off getting as much experience as you can prior to applying. But if you have no experience, keep watching because I am gonna give tips to people for no experience. The hardest part about getting an internship is getting the first one. I promise it will get better after you just land that very first position. So keep trying, expect there's gonna be a lot of rejections at first, but it is going to get easier. Start working as soon as possible. That's including jobs in retail, in food, service, fast food, anything like that, the more work experience you have on your resume, the better. And even though it might not seem like a job at Target is related to working in wildlife biology, employers hiring interns want to know that you have had a job before, that you know what you're doing, you know you need to show up at work on time, you know how to handle yourself professionally, you know how to provide a customer service experience, you know how to communicate effectively. You can really spin retail, food, minimum wage jobs really well to help you land an internship. 
I also recommend you start volunteering as soon as you can. And when you're doing volunteer work, you have a little bit more flexibility to focus a little bit more on the biology related volunteer work. So for example, one of the places I started volunteering with as soon as I turned 14 years old was at a hospital. So at that time I wanted to do pre-med, I wanted to be a doctor. Obviously things have changed since then, but I started working at a hospital, just wheeling patients around the hospital and bringing lab reports to doctors. And even that simple experience helped me get my first internship, had something on my resume to show that I actually had experience in a scientific setting. And those jobs can be so easy to get because a lot less people are willing to volunteer versus the paid internships are a little bit more competitive and you can get fun volunteer work. I know it sucks to be like working so hard in high school in college and then have to go volunteer in your spare time but you can find beach cleanups to organize you, you can volunteer at an animal sanctuary and play with the dogs there's so many options for fun volunteer work but i also understand and have a lot of sensitivity to the people who cannot afford to volunteer so that's why i give the option of using your non-wildlife related job experience in your resume so ideally volunteer work related to biology but also if you can't afford to do that, getting at least some retail food experience. So now let's talk about how to find internships. So let's start with resources that anyone looking for an internship across all fields can use. Indeed. So indeed.com or for my Canadian viewers, indeed.ca. It's just a general job search board where there's a lot of internships posted and you can search by your city directly through your university. Most universities have like a university job board or university internship board where the companies will actually advertise through your college or university directly. So that's going to depend on what university you go to, but I would definitely check their job board to see if there's anything interesting on there. Career fairs in your town or in your university. So I would look mostly at your university career fairs because those are going to be a lot more geared towards college students looking for internships. So keep on top of your career center and when they're going to have career fairs. That's a really good opportunity to hand your resume directly to the hiring manager and really stand out. It also is really intimidating to go to career fairs sometimes, which I totally understand, but it's a really good experience for that feeling of actually putting yourself out there, using those social skills to help land you a job directly through the company that you want to intern with. So for example, say you really want to intern with your local hospital, look at your local hospital's website and look for volunteer or internships there on their website. Similarly, if you wanna work at a specific animal sanctuary, look at the animal sanctuary's website, check out their job section, see if any inter internships are posted there. And for my wildlife folks, I'm gonna give you a few quick wildlife resources that you can use. These are the job boards that I'm constantly checking. One of them is the Texas A&M University Job Board. I'll link to that one below. That is the best resource for wildlife jobs. They have jobs, they of internships all around the world. So definitely check out the Texas A&M job board. Workcabin.ca is also another good resource for environmental jobs. And also another Canadian resource is Eco Canada's job board. I'll also link to those resources below. Okay, let's talk about how to actually get noticed and how to prepare your resume to succeed. So keep watching because I'm gonna give you guys a few pointers that not a lot of people know about and some tips on how to make your resume actually make sense because I've been in the perspective of the recruiter. I've read so many internship resumes and I, I've seen so many mistakes that people have made on their resume that I would have loved to give them the job, but I just couldn't get over these resume mistakes. The number one one is just make your resume clear, concise, and keep it to one to two pages, ideally one page. You know, you have to realize you're in university or high school, you don't have enough to justify two pages of experience. I mean, at this point, you're likely only gonna have volunteer work or some really basic work experience and then your university or high school information. So keep it really concise and brief. Generally, employers only spend a few seconds looking at each resume. So you wanna immediately make it easy to find the information that you wanna convey. I also recommend that before you even write your resume, really brainstorming and thinking about what sets you apart. So what sets you apart? How are you different than this stack of 100 resumes? And keep that in the back of your mind. You don't have to explicitly say it in your resume, but make sure you convey it through your experience in your cover letter, why exactly you are the right fit for the position and why you are unique to everyone else. So you just wanna find that one sticking point that makes you stand out. So for example, this is, this is the one that I use and I've carried this through 
my career is what makes me unique is I have the technical skills to effectively gather and interpret scientific information, but I also have the writing skills where I can convey complicated scientific material in an easy to understand format. So I've used that one in almost every single internship, and that is something unique that not a lot of people have that sets me apart. So make sure you have that reason of why you are unique. I recommend that you put all of your experience, don't leave anything out, really beef it up with your volunteer experience, your work experience. You wanna really communicate and pull out the most important parts. And then you don't really need to talk too much about the parts that are not applicable at all. So for example, if you don't think you'll be using a cash register on this internship, you don't need to mention that you spent two years working on POS training. Um, it's a little bit less relevant, so just make sure you highlight the relevant portion. If you have no experience, pull out your education. So talk about your school projects. That's valuable. Just because it happened in school doesn't mean it's not experience. So make sure you pull out your school experience and relate it to how it's going to help prepare you for being successful in that internship. As far as GPA, I would recommend that you write your GPA on your resume if you got a 3.0 or above. If you got under a 3.0, not the end of the world. I had under a 3.0 for most of university. I just didn't put it on my resume because it's just a little bit less impressive. This next tip is gonna be a secret that employers don't wanna tell you, but that everyone else who's applying for jobs does, is to really beef up your resume with action words. So there's a huge difference between a resume that says, learned how to use cash register, or provided excellent customer service experience, managing retail front end operations, and reduced the shrink in my store by 25%. Phrase things to make it sound like you were pretty much the best person in that entire company. Also recommend that you read your resume out loud and have someone else read it before you even send it in. It's been amazing how many times I've reread a resume and said, oh my God, this makes no sense once you actually say it out loud. So make sure to read it out loud and have someone review it before you send it in. These are all things that are gonna make the recruiter notice you. If you know someone who already is interning at a company, make sure to chat with them, ask them what they did, if they have any recommendations and see if they can do a referral to help you get in at that same company or maybe replace them as an intern, that is gonna be the number one thing that's gonna put your resume on the top of the stack is that networking experience. But I realize not everyone has those kind of connections. I might do another video here on actual interview tips because this is a whole nother subject to kind of tease some of the basics of interviewing. You wanna be happy, you wanna be excited, you wanna be positive, you wanna be really confident that you are gonna be successful in that position. And that's so hard to do. A lot of us are gonna bomb a few interviews before you get good, but the more interviews you do, the better you're gonna get at doing it. You've now landed the job. You are an intern at the World Wildlife Sanctuary in Europe and you love it and you want to get that job full time and get set up for a job as soon as you graduate. So what do you need to do to do that? When you have your internship, make sure you show up on time and respect basic office culture. So this sounds really basic, but I've known interns that just stroll in at 10 a.m. They just don't understand the basic office culture, they dress inappropriately. So make sure you're always observing what other people do. When do other people get into the office? What are other people wearing? And if you don't know right away, just default to the most safe option. So the more professional side, getting there a little bit earlier until you can understand what everyone else's schedule is like. Put full effort and attention into your work. Don't goof off. Don't look at your phone all day. Make sure you're really paying attention to what you're doing. Ask a lot of questions and don't get disappointed when you don't know something. Everyone knows that interns are not experts. You're there for a reason. No one thinks that you are an expert in your field, so don't get worried when you might not know something. Ask a lot of questions because that's why you're there. Really, they're helping you out by helping get you into that field. So make sure you're not afraid to ask questions no matter how stupid they sound because people realize that you're not gonna know everything. You don't have to pretend to be an expert. That's something that I made a huge mistake of when I got my first internship. Also, be excited about the job. I had an intern once who 
seems like they didn't even care. He had said that he didn't even really like biology that much. And then that just made me sad. Like I wanted an intern who was going to be excited and be happy to be there because the reality is, is you have been chosen out of so many people to get that job. So you should be grateful. You should be excited and you should be happy about where you are and happy and excited about working for that company because that kind of passion is going to get you a full-time offer once the internship is over. They want someone who is excited about biology just like they are and really enjoys working for that company. If you're at an internship and you don't like it, it's okay. Don't worry. That's why you're there. You're there to learn. You're there to see if that's even something that you like. Don't be afraid to really reassess what your career field is and maybe look at going into a different field based on that internship. And that can really happen. When I started volunteering at the hospital, I realized that I don't want to work in a hospital forever. So then I started looking for a different type of internship. So that's the beauty of internships is you're there to see if you like it. You don't have to stay and don't put up with any sort of abuse bosses or any sort of hostile work environment you really have to stand up for yourself if things are getting hostile or abusive the other tip I have once you actually have an internship is to get business cards or to get other people's business cards and build your network so the way to think about it is that the people that you're meeting now at this internship are gonna be the ones that you're gonna be contacting later about how you can get a job with their company. You want them to remember you as the best intern they ever had. So make sure that you are making that list of contacts early. Keep all the business cards from your colleagues, create a LinkedIn page and add everyone on LinkedIn and make sure you maintain those connections that you make during your first internship. Because you'll realize as you start looking for a full-time job, connections are key. That's the number one reason you're even getting an internship is to start getting connections at companies. And those connections are going to get your resume to the top when you apply for a full-time job and are going to get you jobs. So reach out to people, introduce yourself and follow up and continuously keep talking to those people throughout your internship. The last tip that I have for getting an internship is put yourself out there. I know it's so intimidating and anxiety inducing to really put yourself out there and introduce yourself to people, but you have to, you have to do it for to get a job. No one's gonna want someone closed off and too afraid to talk to people. So here's a practice in putting yourself out there. You know how I mentioned earlier to define the one unique thing that sets you apart? So comment in the comment section below what your unique skill is. I want you to practice your elevator pitch. I also encourage you to share this video with people that you know who are looking for an internship and who can use these tips. If you guys are curious about how much a biology degree pays, um, check out my video above on exactly how much money that I make with a biology degree. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps you get your dream internship and I will see you guys later.